Welcome back, everybody. It's two guys in a stack of comics. My name's Mike. My buddy Reed's over there with me. And right behind me is a large stack of comics um, because we love our stacks of comics. And Absolutely. Uh, today we're going to talk about our favorite comics from uh, June. Reed, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Hard to believe we are halfway or more almost halfway through the year, like almost like exactly halfway through. But uh, yeah, no, pretty good month of comic books. We we didn't get Conan this month. So little, little, uh, our, our favorite book out there, but still a pretty good month, even with Conan uh, n- not on there. So still some pretty good books that are out there. I am missing some barbarian action. And uh, yeah. I know Titan's going to deliver it soon. We've got uh, Grim Jim's up. Probably yep. Look, away I think I think we speak. get a couple issues this month, so that'll be kind of cool. No scripts, yep. <laughs> but yeah, no, still pretty good month. Uh, for me, sadly, as a DC fan, I can only recommend one DC book this month. I really enjoyed Neil before Zod number six. Um, I just think it's a great story about Zod. It's kind of him. He's he suffered a lot of losses. He's real building. He's kind of taking control of this spaceship of prisoners and is building like his own army. It's just a great character study into Zod and kind of showing him being equally ruthless and villainous. I just love the story because it's not trying to make him a hero. It's not trying to do the anti-hero treatment. It's letting Zod be Zod. There's some other DC books that were close this month, but this is the series I would most solidly say. Someone asked, like, what should I pick up? I think this is a really good and interesting book. Superman had some good stuff this month, but I I think that would be uh, the, the best book that I would recommend from DC. Mike, for you, for DC, what DC have for you this month before we kick into the the Marvels and the, the Indies? Oh, my gosh. If you all have not read this short little series, um, the first night is uh, amazing. It concluded this month. Um, all three issues were spectacularly written and drawn. Lots of great 1930s gritty action. Look at that Batman panel right there. The old 30s Batman, 1939. I mean, it was just amazing. Great story, fun. Um, This this panel right here, look at this panel. Can you see that panel? No, Perkins art in that was was absolutely fantastic. And um, it was so freaking cool. Um, If you like Batman and you like an older Batman tale that's just kind of like pulled out of the, uh, you know, the regular continuity and universe that that one delivered. That was awesome. Um, For DC, I also loved the um, the facsimiles. Uh, They did this one. Yeah. Original Gotham by Gaslight. Very, very cool book to recollect. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. I can't read it. Of course, I love my vintage Batman stories now, so I'm glad they are delivering. And of course, issue three of the classic, the amazing, the original crisis, the crisis that should have been the last big crisis. Been the only crisis. Before the continuing yeah. crises of, of crises. <laughs> you know, reproduced in all its 1980s glory, including the fun ads, you know, and stuff for the kids. Uh, just a great, great story. Legendary story um, in comic book history, which of course concludes, spoiler alert, with the death of one of my favorite beloved superheroes. But it's so amazing to see this coming out every month. There's one more that comes out next month. Um, so yeah. If you've not read it, really cool to see those get some reprints. And I think, and again, you can always collect them in collected editions, but those are pricey. It's really cool to see them get the single issue format and kind of get them back out there and kind of release it in something where you can just walk on the shelf and pick it up and and try out the story. I think Crisis definitely delivers as as an older book. And it's really, I I just love the faithful reprinting on it. They get close to kind of the newsprint paper too, which is kind of cool. So um, appreciate DC doing that for sure. Um, Yeah, sad to see First Night End as well. That was a good one. But but uh, hopefully we'll get more. I, I really hope. I thought the ending was was a little rushed, it seemed, but overall really, really solid storytelling. They, they only gave them three issues. I mean, they could have. Yeah. I mean, I think they were kind of experimenting with like uh, the magazine. Is this going to work kind of thing? You yeah. know, 
I, I don't know how successful the Rogues were or what other books they've done in this format, but Rogues was done in this format and First Night. Rogues went for four issues. Um, yeah. Yeah, the so. Black Label, kind of the magazine format. I mean, they've done some Superman. They've done some Batman. It's largely just been two or three issues for most of them. So it'll be interesting to see if First Night can keep going and that like that was a great book. I, I would love to see them get a second volume. We'll see if they kind of keep it going. Yeah, but yeah, DC, start. some decent stuff going on. I would say I wouldn't quite recommend it, but I do think the Superman stuff going on right now. Although we have an event coming up in July, so we'll see what happens with with absolute power for DC. But overall, pretty pretty good month there. Uh, Marvel books for this month. I actually have quite a few Marvels that I liked this month. So I know a lot, a lot of people have been loving this Daredevil run, but I actually really have liked the last couple of issues. Issue 10 has a real knockdown, drag out fight between Daredevil and the Kingpin. Yes, that's happened before, but it was actually really well choreographed. I thought they did a really good job of setting that up, kind of putting Matt Murdock back in um, and having that, that conflict. They also had Matt kind of become a priest in the book, and so he's balancing that responsibility with being Daredevil. It's been interesting I will say at the very least, it's a different approach. And I do like at least that it's different. It's not re redoing the same exact stuff from other runs. So I think there's some good elements to it. Um, I think it was a good issue. I really enjoyed it. For me, the standout this month, though, my favorite Marvel character got a lot of good books this month. Uh, so Blood Hunt, not a tie-in thing that I'm reading, but they've done Wolverine has kind of had his set series in that. Two issues actually came out this month. Um, I think uh, Jose Ryup is on the art, and then I believe it's Tom Waltz, who I've never read before. Uh, really doing a great job on these. Basically, Wolverine versus vampires, which is just fantastic it's it works awesome. incredibly well <laughs> really good action in it ties into some of the things where wolverine in the last run with ben percy he became friends with kind of this female vampire hunter who herself got kind of turned and so he's helping her control her, you know her ability to do that it's just a really good well choreographed action sequences if you just want a pure adrenaline action wolverine kind of story it's really cool it takes a lot of twists and turns i think it's only got one issue left uh, of this particular little mini series in it again i've kind of avoided blood hunt but i wolverine you know i'm like hey i'll pick it up and it did not let me down so that was really good i will say another marvel book i enjoyed wolverine with the movie coming out they're doing a lot of mini series and stuff they have wolverine mod report nights which is chris claremont getting to write wolverine again no and your cells are on the art this was a five issue series it's actually done well enough they're doing another five issue series as well with claremont with Claremont, Claremont right now, you get classic Captain America, classic Black Widow, Wolverine. It all takes place from before, like, X-Men 268, which was when Claremont kind of did a team, team up between those three in the 90s. Really just fun, solid action adventure. And anytime a legend like Claremont is still putting stories out there, it's just good to see him writing. I wish he was on an actual X-Men book currently. I don't know why he can write for Marvel, but they won't hand him a big book. But if it's going to get me a monthly Wolverine thing from Claremont, I will take whatever we can get. Absolutely. So I thought that was a really, really good and enjoyable book and a great characterization of Captain America, which is rarer and rarer these days with Marvel. So really good to see. From the Marvel end, from Mike, what about you this month? How'd you, how, what Marvel books hit you? I know we have a couple in common as well. Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man 6. Yeah. Ultimate Black Panther. They still remain on my sub list. I have not dropped them yet because they are not disappointing. They are really, really good. Um, decent artwork, good storytelling, lots of good action. You know, um, I, I, I like, I like these books. Um, I think Ultimate and, Black Panther has done a lot of really cool world building and setup. Um, I think, you know, maybe could use a little bit more action into it, but I do like the character building. I think what I have to give Brian Hill a lot of credit with Ultimate Black Panther is my biggest complaint with Black Panther in the last couple of years in the main continuity has been not enough time on T'Challa, and that's not a problem in this book. He gets yeah. he gets heroic moments. He gets to be smart. You, they show him as a scientist. They show him as a warrior. They show him as a strategist. And it's not quite to the level that you normally want to see for T'Challa, but I just I love that it's approximating and getting close. Uh, yeah. We did get our first fill-in artist on Ultimate Black Panther, but still, you know, really kind of good story that they had there. And like you said, it's still on both of our sub lists, so they're doing something right with it. Um, Ultimate Spider-Man, I'm glad you brought that one up. That was probably my book of the month, my best issue for this month, I would say. Um, 
I think it's so cool, right? You no, know, it was a great story. What I loved about it, and I mean, we'll we'll do a little bit of kind of spoilers on Ultimate Spider-Man to go through. I love you kind of have the show showdown between him and Kingpin, obviously teased, you know, from the cover. Um, and it doesn't go the way that you would expect out of a comic book. You know, you kind of expect, hey, six issue arc, everything's gonna get wrapped up. They really kind of let it go where it makes more sense. I like that they're what what I will say that I like about this comic book, and this is where I've always liked Jonathan Hickman as a writer. I, I think Jonathan Hickman writes very believable character arcs for most of his characters. And I think what I like about this is he's appropriately letting this be. This is a 35-year-old Peter Parker who is not a superhero. And he is right. learning, and so it doesn't come easily. He's having to take his licks. He's getting beaten, but he's figuring things out, and he's getting better. And I, just, I think that's really cool. I think that's the heart of Peter Parker. What made Spider-Man so great in those initial comic books with Stan is he'd lose fights. He, he would struggle, but he always got back up. And so I really liked that and enjoyed that with this book. I think also if you're a Spider-Man and Mary Jane fan, you'll be very happy with developments in this issue. Um, yes. It almost seems like Ultimate Spider-Man is existing to be like, Amazing Spider-Man won't give you this, so we will. <laughs> and that there's so many good moments between those two characters. It, great book. Great to see Chichetto back on art I know. Uh, as well. It's just such a great read um, and a great jumping on point because things have gotten kind of convoluted with Spidey of late. Mm -hmm. And um, this is simple, easy to jump in, fun to read, um, good artwork. And so uh, me and Jackson are having a blast with that one. And um, I'm just, I'm happy to see it. I'm really, really happy to see it. Um, I'd be interested to, to know what some of our viewers uh, picked up this month that surprised them. Um, anything that we didn't mention, uh, I'm sure there's a bunch. And, um, you know, anyway, it was a fun trip uh, to the comic shop this month and lots of good stuff in, in my um, in my pull list. So, yeah, no, I, I think last couple of things I'd mentioned for this month, I think a couple of series, just to spotlight real quick. Uh, Mad Cave Comics, we like calling out smaller comic publishers. They're doing this Dick Tracy series. Mm -hmm. Great noir detective story. I've been really impressed with the first two issues thus far really good kind of artwork throughout it's building to a very kind of noirish plot you kind of get it's nothing remarkable or anything like that as far as the artwork but the story is really rewarding and i think it's, it's again we talked a bit about indie comics in our last video we talked about how it kind of can fit those different niches and take old classic characters and kind of remix them a little bit and i really yeah. like what they're doing it's great to see a smaller publisher like mad cave get that other one I would point out real quickly as well, just to kind of give it up. I haven't been as big a fan of Geiger, which is why I haven't recommended it as much. I'm still enjoying it, still picking it up. But I have to say Rook Exodus and Redcoat have both been fantastic from, from Ghost Machine. Redcoat is such a fun comic book to read. He, he's such a scoundrel kind of scumbag character. It just it makes the story have an element of predictability, uh, unpredictability to it. Um, it. It's fun to see just a, a jaunt through history and different historical figures and things popping up and kind of this fictional world. And it's just a really fun book. What I have to give Redcoat, and I think that's probably been my favorite of the Ghost Machine series, is that it does capture that old school essence of comics of just it's just 20 to 30 pages of just pure fun kind of twists yeah. and turns. And then I'll give Rook Exodus. This is one of the better sci-fi stories that I've read in years. This doesn't have as much action in, in issue three as previous months, but there's so much world building and development that's taking place in there. And what I really liked about that is when I, with this issue, I was kind of worried that Rook might be a mini series or they might end it quickly. Everything that they set up in this third issue kind of makes it seem like they've got long-term plans for this thing. And it that's feels the one like these stories have long legs. Yeah. And that's one complaint I've always kind of had with indies is that it feels like you get super invested and it's over in six months. If Ghost Machine can keep these books going and kind of do a lot of world building and, and you know, if 10 years from now I'm still picking up Rook issues, that'd be fantastic. Because I think, you know, Ghost Machine, I'm hoping they've cracked the code and figured it out and done another little image relaunch. I know we had the original one with like Spawn and Savage Dragon and all those in the 90s. It would be really cool if Ghost Machine can keep these books going for years because I think they've got some really great concepts and when you have jeff johns who in all honesty right. should just be running all of dc comics but instead is doing his own line and i believe ghost machine even could have been an imprint at dc and they turned that down wow. um 
it's really great to see him doing great work with it and seeing Jason Fabok and Brian Hitch. And I'll even say for Geiger, while it hasn't been an amazing series where I would tell people, oh, you got to read it. It's a good series. It's solid. It's got a lot of good character development. And so um, really cool to see those indies. Let us know again, as Mike said before, guys, what did you pick up this month? What did you enjoy from DC, Marvel, or an indie book? Is there anything that we missed? As always, we love seeing recommendations, folks. Thank you to everybody who watches. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a blessed July and happy comic hunting for this month, folks. Thanks, everybody.